Welcome to this look at new mods on Farming Simulator 19 with me, Mr. Sealy P. It's Monday the 8th of February. We have new mods. We have two, three updates today. The updates are as follows. From the left, the Razzle Toro RVH by Paolo 5090R, the Lizard FS60-2 by Ostri, and the old production pack by Farmer Manu. That has had quite a few updates to it. I would suggest kind of checking out the change log. At the moment, it only, it's only compatible with No Man's Land, as far as I can tell by the change log. Um, there's a few other bits and bobs in there you might need to know, but quite a few things have changed on that pack. Well worth a look if you're playing on No Man's Land. Uh, those are the updates today. Right in front of me, I've got the old fence and gates. This by Slycliff. 4.54 megabytes download. These are one and two slots. We have a series of gates, different sizes, although they look the same to me. Well, we'll have a look at the mod up. We've got a fence post, and then we've got fence panels of various different sizes as well. What's weird about this one for me? Only this particular one here. We've got a left and a right panel, but surely you just rotate it around, wouldn't you? Oh, no, I guess because the fence has got the slats one side. Ignore me. The gate's open. Like so. And then one is just a gate to the side with a panel, as far as I can tell. I don't think this opens. Nope. These you will find, weirdly, not under decoration. They're under placeables and miscellaneous. So we start with the gate 3 metre for 100, gate 4 metre 120, gate 5 metre 140 and fence with gate for 40. Those are the ones we've looked at already. There's the stake or post and then we've got the fence half segment left, half segment right, ones I've just looked at. And then we've got one segment for 25, two segments for 50, three for 75, four for 100, five for 125. Very nice. Indeed. Maybe this particular style you're looking for? I don't know, in all honesty. <laughs> I don't know you, but hopefully that be, might be something you might be interested in. Next, we've got the Polish Fence and Gate Pack. This is by Casper. 6.85 megabytes download. These range 1, 2 and 3 slots. I think it might be this one that's 3, but again, not too heavy on the slot count. I do like the fact we've got a nice big solid pillar there as well. We have gate or fence sections, 1 two and three and then we have the posts that go with them one two and three then we've got the obviously the post we've got the gateway with letterbox this opens that side like that then this one opens like a regular door and then we've got this one here we've also got a larger fence post this one opens like that Lots of creaking and squeaking going on while I'm looking at them. These are also under placeables and miscellaneous. We start with the old fence, which is the first one, and then the post, which we looked at. The brick post, gate with mailbox, 600 for that, it's not too bad. Then you've got old fence 2 with its post, old fence 3 with its post, and the metal gate, which was the last one we looked at. Concrete post for 100, and then we move on to the pack we just looked at. So we go. That's the Polish Fence and Gate Pack by Casper. Next, we've got the pallet rack. We've had a few different pallet racks in the past. We've had ones that are collapsible, ones you can move on pallets. Missy B had a couple of sets out. This one's got some... Um, what would you refer to that as? Safety barrier, I guess. Safety barrier. Um, so if an idiot in a forklift comes trundling along and cracks into the end of this, it's not going to take the whole shelving down. It should hit that first in theory. Uh, it does say in, on the website, I think this will take pallets and it will take tools and things like that. Up to 18 pallets can be stored or it is used to store front loader tools. This is 2.79 megabytes download, four slots on console. This is by, by Der Mindener. Mindener. Nicely made, looks like pallet racking. This is... Oh, I can't remember where I found this. I think this was under decoration. 
Yep. I didn't write it down on my little piece of paper like I normally do. Uh, oh, that's it. Yeah, Minden. Mindener. Uh, pallet rack, 500. Four slots for the first one, which drops down to one. Next, we've got this. This is one of two square houses. 11.31 megabytes download by bar T. This one is 17 slots and the other one is 16. This is the renovated version. The houses are identical. One of them's grey and the other one looks like this. We'll have a look in the mod tab in just a second. Nicely detailed. I, what I do find peculiar, this is the renovated one. You'll see when we look in the mod tab because the one that's not renovated has got these kind of patches all over it. I would have thought the renovated one would have been wouldn't have had the patches if it had been renovated, but it's a minor thing. The trigger is just here by the steps to sleep through the night. Um, you can't go into the building. Doesn't take up too much space either. It hasn't got a particularly large footprint, this one. Under farmhouses. So as you can see, you've got the square house there for 45,000, which is 16 slots, sleep trigger. Then the square house after renovation. But I like said, when you look at them, they've got the same kind of patches here and there. That one's just been painted and decorated a bit, I guess. 75 grand for the renovated version. Those are by Bar T. Moving on. We have this. This is the Disc Plow 3DR by FBT Modding. 4.99 megabytes to download. Nine slots on console. This has got a really cool feature, actually. I, I, I just want, again, it's a really small thing, but I just thought, well, that's pretty cool. It's a very narrow plow, as you can tell. You can create fields with them if you want to. It would take quite a while, but you absolutely can. Or do edging or something like that. Nicely detailed. Under tools. And plows. The Lizard 3DR. 5,000 to buy. 2 metre width. Requires 78 horsepower. And it will run at 11 miles per hour. It's 10 grand if you get the new version. But you can go for the old used version. Which is only 5 grand. So it's a bit of a... When you look at it there. It's like 5 grand. You go, well, that's, not, that's nice. But you don't get that lovely shiny one for 5 grand. For 5 grand... Yeah, for five grand, you get that one. <laughs> Bit naughty, isn't it? Anyway. What I like about it is the fact that we can turn the plough, but it doesn't turn like ploughs normally do. It doesn't... or well, the ones I say normally do, the ones that we've had in-game before, the whole thing doesn't pick up and rotate. If I turn plough... It just swings that centre section over. That's pretty cool. It looks like that bar that goes out towards the cab, if you open the rear window, maybe you just swing it across with that, but it must have a pin or something to hold it in place. So that's how you swing it. You can keep the leading edge of your, your plough wherever you want it to be. Lower it down. And away you go. When you get to the end of the road, turn around, come back the other way. Rotate your plough and away you go. Uh, you can create fields if you do allow create fields uh, by L1 and triangle. And then you can make your own fields up. There you go. So, the display 3DR by FBT Modding. Ooh. Next, we have got this one. And this one, unfortunately, I've tried a few different things, but I think it's broken. This is the Lizard ASTH. This is also under plough, so I think it's more like a chisel plough. This is by JV3D Modding and Sloot Chess Modding. It's 5.61 megabytes download and five slots on console. We have a few different options. Now, it looks to me like the tines are at the wrong angle. Now, I've, I, don't, I don't know if, if that's the case. They may well be supposed to be like that. But under L1, those are my options. Lower plough and allow create fields. R1 and then L1, R1. So there's no way actually of adjusting those. Those bars, as far as I can tell, fixed in place. But here's the problem. If I lower it, it doesn't plough. So it's not actually working. So I thought, well, maybe, for some bizarre reason, maybe you have to allow crate fields for it to work. So if I allow crate fields and then drop it down, still nothing. Then I started to panic and think, is it something to do with the ground here? But that other plough worked no problem at all. 
if I go over to an edge now with it allow create fields and drop it down it doesn't either um, so I'm not quite sure what's wrong with that oh I could find the one log that I left on the floor um, yeah I like I said I can't find any way to adjust it in any way but it, it definitely doesn't seem to be working I don't suppose as it should be anyway uh, this you will find should you want to get one um, as a paperweight or something there we go, the Lizard A AST-H, 2,500 to buy, it requires 100 horsepower, 2.8 megabyte, uh, 2.8 megabytes, 2.8 meters runs at 9 miles per hour. Options available, we can change the main cards, anything on that pallet. Like so. Apologies. I was quite surprised actually, because normally... JV3D stuff and Sloot Chess modding stuff is absolutely tip top, so I, I was quite surprised. Anyway, uh, I might need a bigger tractor for that actually. What I'll do is pull this to one side and we'll go inside in just a second. Next, we have this. This is the KUHN. You know what I mean. This is the Acura 1600. This is 3.51 megabytes download, 8 slots on console. This is by FBT Modding and Vincius LS. This will spread out to 36 metres. It is a 1,600 litre. It does fertiliser only, doesn't do fertiliser and lime. That's not bad, 36. Uh, this is under fertiliser technology. 16,800 to buy, runs at 12 miles an hour. Yeah, eight slots for the first one, which drops down to one. There are no options available. You get it as it is. Has got those sieves for getting rid of the clumpy bits and stuff as it goes through, so it doesn't block up your spreaders. I don't think... I did have a quick check. I don't think it has the ability to change width. It's just 36. We'll double check. And L1, R1, L1 and R1. But what it does have is the ability to unload. So on R1 and triangle, you can take the fertilizer out. Although with this one, I don't suppose it makes as much difference because it doesn't do lime as well. But then I suppose if you don't want to leave it with fertilizer stored in it, if you want to go for a more realistic approach, uh, turn it on. Does that look like 36 meters? Oh, maybe. Yeah, it's pretty wide, isn't it? I've got sport using that one that goes out to 45. Yeah, that is pretty wide, isn't it? There we go. There's not really much else to say or show on that one. That's that's what it does. Uh, the KUHN Acura 1600 by FBT Modding and Vincius LS. Drop that down. Next, we have got the Stara Prima 45 and 90. This is 10.3 megabytes download, 18 slots on console. It's by Agro Tonio. It does have an attacher as well. The attacher is one slot. We've had a few of these of late um, where the transport position is like this and it goes in that direction. And with an attacher, you attach onto an end bit like that. Uh, and then when you get to where you go and you unfold it and off you go, seeding that direction. It's nicely detailed. Very nicely detailed, actually. This does seed and fertiliser. I'm not actually... That was something I wasn't sure about, whether or not it needs to be adjusted. When I bought it out with the um, Massey, the Massey seemed to be tipped at an angle. But I don't know if it was just because I hadn't left it in the right position originally. But then it shouldn't... It should just hook up... Standard, shouldn't it? I don't know. We'll see in just a second. Um, under Cedars. I was right on it. There you go. The Prima 4590. 52,500. But this has a trick up its sleeve. 4.8 metres wide. 132 horsepower required. Runs at 11 miles per hour. And it does everything. Additionally, this offers the possibility to seed directly. It is a direct drill. So we have under the seeding section, a direct drill. But it does all your regular crop types, including your oilseed, radish and grass. And then it does corn and sunflower, sugar beet and um, cotton as well. Pretty handy. Options available. We have it standard. 
or we can have it with normal tyres inverted. I was watching Mike Mitchell the other day and he was talking about their Borgo C drills and someone had asked why they have their tyres reversed, inverted tread. And he said it was to avoid compaction. If the ground's particularly soft and the tread's in whichever direction it's supposed to be in, I think I went for inverted, yeah. If the tread's with the V that way and it digs into the ground, if the ground's soft, it makes more compaction because the tyre's designed to kind of cut through the ground unless it's a flotation tyre. If you swing it round the other way, it reduces compaction because the V of the tread isn't digging in. It's, it's facing the other direction. I, you know, a lot of people have asked that before about various different ones. Why has he got the inverted tread? And I was never quite sure, but he kind of explained it pretty well. And this probably loads you out. I know you that already. So, attacher goes on. The attacher is under miscellaneous. Uh, it doesn't seem too bad. Yeah, look. That's weird. When it attaches, because that is slightly twisted at an angle... That's twisted at an angle, which means the three points twisted a little bit of an angle on the tractor. I wonder then if you have to be a bit more careful when you um, pack it all up. So, so under R1, right stick side to side will open that. So that will prepare it for operation. And then right stick up and down. So side to side will do that. Up and down puts the wheels out of the way and it should be ready for operation. I will then disconnect and we should be good to go. What I'm going to see is, will this operate with this still attached? It does, brilliant. Because when we had the other day, you had to take the attacher off to get it to run and then it seems to me a lot of mucking around to, to be able to do that. So, fertiliser 1650 litres, wheat 1200 but, like I say, using my side panel, I'm going to scroll through. Wheat, barley, oats, canola, soybean, oilseed radish grass, corn, sunflower, sugar beet, cotton, and back again. It does everything. And it's a direct drill. He says, and now it's not. Oh, it's another one. We have to lower it. Hang on a minute. Isn't that weird? Okay. I take that back. You are going to have to disconnect it, because for some reason it's not recognising it. Let's drop that off and see if it works this time. That's a pity, because that's going to be a bit of a pain. But I suppose it should work this way, shouldn't it? Turn it on? Yeah. So it does have to be disconnected. Drop it down. And away we go. If you want to use the ridge markers... L1 and up on the D-pad does the left ridge marker, again does the right ridge marker and again puts them away. That's, I have to say that's pretty good for the width of it, 4.8 metres. The fact it does everything, the seed tank's not too small. If you're starting out um, and to get a, a cedar slash planter that does everything, it's not a bad size though, it's not too big, not too small, somewhere kind of in between. It's a nice bit of kit, that. Yeah, it doesn't matter. The hub's fixed. I think the hub's in the wrong position. If you look at that now, the wheel is continuing to turn, so it doesn't matter where I, where I stop and where I put the wheel, that hub is tilted at an angle, whereas it should be straight, because that's causing that twist in the tractor when you hook up to the attacher. It's a minor thing, but it is... Uh, I did wonder why the Massey was all twisted when I was driving out with it. Nice seed of that. The Stara Prima 4590 by Agro Donio. Uh, what's next? Right. Next, we have got this. The Grimmer KS5400. This is a topper. The one we've got in game at the moment is a 3.2 metre topper, I think it is. This is a 6 metre Holm topper, or just topper, depends how you want to refer to it. It does show in the picture this is a trailed one. I, I'm going to see if it will go on the front, although why, I suppose you might want to pull the... Uh, no, you wouldn't. No, I'm just thinking, would you want to pull the harvester behind you? Because if this is going at six, the harvesters we've got aren't that wide. They're only about a two metre width, so I don't suppose you'd want to, would you really? Nicely made, nicely detailed. 6.45 megabytes download. This is by Matthew FS and Zuta. 
This is under potato technology. Uh, yeah, so the Crema KS75-4 is 3.2 meters wide. This one at the end, 6 meters wide, requires 107 horsepower, runs at 9 miles per hour. Options available, we can change the rim color from silvery gray to black. That's it for options. I've taken the liberty of getting some potatoes ready to harvest. Now, unfold the topper, because at the moment it's in transport position. You transport it that way, like the cedar was just now. Unfolding the tipper, the tipper, the topper, moves the wheels round out the way into that position. That's what I just had. Oh, hasn't finished. There we go. Now I just connect. So like I say, it does show it on the back. So we'll do it on the back first, and then, because I'm just curious, and I'm sure most people probably will be, uh, turn it on, drop it down. And there we are, topping very nicely, doing the job it should do, but just under twice the width of the standard in-game one. I think it's probably designed to go in that direction, but it doesn't have to check, does it? Oh, it will work in that direction as well. So you can run this forwards or backwards if you wish. I don't, yeah, I'm not sure it's supposed to, is it? But it is working. Just so for those people that was already, when you, as soon as you saw it, thought, oh, I wonder. So there we have it, the Grimmer KS5400 by Matthew FS and Zuta. Which brings me on to the last of the mods for today, and it's this. This is the Transfer Yard slash Recycling Center. This is by HR Forst and Farzoig Bell. 17.04 megabytes download, 21 slots on console. Now, it doesn't come with these... Um, containers doesn't come with the um, wood chipper and the other bits and bobs I put on there I put them on here to kind of give you an idea of the sorts of things you can do from it with it um, also it, show, I mean, it showed it in the picture on the website um, with a few bits and bobs on it the recycling center being that you know these come and go the IT runner containers rubbish gets put in them or junk gets put in or crops or whatever it is you want to go into them on this one, I've already kind of, again, from the picture, simulated that a load of logs have been delivered. So you've got your wood chipper up on here, which goes into a container. The logging gets done, the wood chips go into there, the IT runner containers get taken away, fresh one gets put in and away you go. Very nice. You don't have to do it with that. It's it's up to you. It's kind of a, a narrative device thing. Nice big old Lego blocks here. It's just cool. I think it's a clever thing to have a little hub where things can be brought in and then shipped off again. You know, you can have vehicles coming in and out, collecting and stuff unloading, which is nice. So you've got the ramp here for getting up and down to there, but you've also got this, which is to aid in the unloading of flatbed trailers, curtain siders, whatever it might be. So it might be whatever your loader is. You might have a skid steer loader. You know, you might not have a a large vehicle up on there might not be able to reach as high so this helps with that if we go into here that button there please work lowers that down so when you arrive you back into there unhook from your trailer and you can raise the whole thing up to make it easier for loading or unloading i think it's really cool clever idea I'm not sure, I don't know, some people will probably look at it and think, I'm, I, I really haven't got a use for it. I think possibly if it had a silo maybe attached or something for storage, I don't know. I mean, I think it's great. Anyway, my head's already thinking, oh, I wonder what I could do with it, you know, in a storyline. I know I say that a lot, but, oh, dropped into the container. 
Uh, that was the other thing I was to say. The bumpers down here on the floor, they are attached. So when you unload one of your IT runner containers, if you get it kind of slightly at an angle, it does kind of clip the wall and it will slide in along those bumpers quite nicely, actually. It, it kind of makes it, i say, almost foolproof, not completely foolproof. If we go back into here again, press it again. Up it goes into its position to be used. The lights up here are automatic. They come on at night. Yeah, it's just, it's just cool. Uh, this is under miscellaneous. 225,000 to buy. Uh, and like I said, it was... How many slots did I say it was? 21 slots for the first one, which when you consider the detail on it, and the ramp going up and down and stuff like that, 21 slots is nothing really. That's pretty cool. So that's by HR Forst and Fuzzoig Bell. And that's it for today. I'll probably see you tomorrow, on Tuesday. It all depends when you're watching this. For more mods, I hope you found this useful and informative in some way, shape or form. If you have, give us a like. If you don't subscribe yet, please do. If you want to leave a comment, feel free. And if you want to share this video, then please be my guest. Whatever you should choose to do. Thanks for watching.